Good morning. Who is the king that will be raised up? Our reading is Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6 today. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. So who is the king that will be raised up? This, this really should be an easy one. And yet, many times there are false prophets, false teachers out there, and some of them will actually point to these verses right here and say, oh, look, this is referring to me. They are taking that and trying to take it to themselves. But I think we'll get a good answer here. Some of these false prophets want to make this these verses, a prediction of their ministry. And I want you to know that you can call something a ministry all day long, but if it's if it's serving some personal human agenda and it's not serving God's agenda, it's no ministry of God's. But now who again is this king that is being referred to? So this is a very important message for this time. When Babylon has been sent in and is going to destroy the kingdom and overturn everything, the heathen king Nebuchadnezzar is invaded from Babylon. And it seems like the Hebrew nation will be utterly swallowed up. So is there no hope? Has God's plan for his people come to this, come to, come to apparently to nothing? So although this group of leaders presently in the time of Jeremiah, although they have failed, and God is overturning everything, he's now engaged in some direct replacement. He's going to sweep away the rascals in one swoop via this invasion. The prediction is future, this prediction of a king. And it's a prediction of a king singular. Now, notice some of the reference points here. He's a king that's going to sit on David's throne. This king, again, is going to be truly righteous. He's going to make right judgments. That means immediately that he's going to be very unlike the long list of kings that were way off of God's plan and doing evil and wicked things. It also says the people will be safe under his reign. And his name will be called the Lord our Righteousness. So this can only be, in fact, this could only be God. This is a reference to Jesus coming ultimately as king to reign. He's going to sit on David's throne. He will reign in righteousness. The people will all be safe under his rulership. This couldn't be anybody but the Messiah himself. Jesus, who was nailed to the cross for us, out of love and ready to give himself for us. Jesus said in one place, there's none good but God. That's true. And Jesus himself is God. Jesus comes as a suffering servant and he dies on the cross, but he also comes as a conquering king. We can't forget some of those texts, for example, the passages in the book of Revelation. You know, the human leaders have shown their weaknesses, but Jesus never showed us any weaknesses because he loved us and stretched out his arms and died on the cross for us. So Jesus will be the ultimate ruler. He'll be the best of shepherds. In the face of what looks like total annihilation for God's people, through his servant Jeremiah, we're given a message of hope. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. We are glad that here's a prophecy, not just for Jeremiah, not just for the kingdom of Judah, a prophecy for us. Jesus is coming. Jesus will be our king. Thank you for him, Lord. May we be ready to receive him when he comes, and may he come soon. You, Lord, you be our king. You be our shepherd, and let us be your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The king to be raised up is Jesus, and this is a message of hope even for you and I, not just for the kingdom of Judah. Go out into your day knowing you're a servant of this king. Have a wonderful day.